I want to discuss something by the mercy of Pandit Sri Krishna's Babaji Maharaj, who is certainly uh, influential in the transformation, transformational psychology. <laughs> Means way of thinking. <laughs> so it's amazing you can understand the ingress of Guru Bhakti and Guru Shakti. Now, when you have, you know, when you actually have a guru, you, know, you can feel it. Now, I know, I know a vast, I know the vast difference. That's why I'm so forceful about preaching that everyone should take diksha. Human beings that are cultured and religious and what to speak of seriously practicing. Diksha is a very, don't underestimate the power of diksha and what it, and, and everyone that it represents and all that it represents. Because it represents Krishna and all the liberated souls and great saints and sadhvis and one's lineage or line, beginning with Bhagwan himself and Radharani and her expansions. It's a good, good group to be linked up with. Good group of industries. <laughs> All this Shakti and Shakti Man, they become your family members. You become a member of the family. Inconceivable mercy. So in the last line of this verse, it says, Atmaram opi ariramat. So it, Atma, Atmaram and Ram. It's Ram and Ram. Atmaram and arir, Ariramat. So it appears that the same word is being repeated twice. That means uh, self-satisfaction. So I, I was, uh, there's also, this is mentioned in another place which I collected over here. These two words in chapter 29, verse 42, Atmaramo and Ariramat, in line 4, they seem like a repetition of the same point. But there's a very important difference between the word Atmaram and Ariramat. Because uh, Atmaram means Krishna is self-satisfied, he's blissful, happy, completely fulfilled within himself. Krishna is, in, is inherent, is inherent, Eternal constitutional nature is infinite bliss and fulfillment. The Upanishads describe the absolute truth, Sri Krishna, as rasa vai saha, that God is bliss. He's full of rasa and joy by nature. 